I like to do all the talking myself. It's one of my greatest pleasures. I often have long conversations all by myself, and sometimes I am so clever, I don't understand a single word of what I've been saying. Now, we had uh, Patrick Walsh earlier on. We still have Patrick Walsh. He's responsible for this book here, Patrick Walsh, Oscar Wilde, The World's Favourite 100 Quotes. We have, of course, five callers, which I'm giving you now. And here is a question for you. Can you name, please, give us the Christian name of Oscar Wilde's wife? The Christian name, please, of Oscar Wilde's wife, 1857 uh, for the Costa Local Call. First five callers, each receiving a signed copy of this book. Signed by Patrick, not by Oscar. Speaking of Oscar, this. I choose my friends for their good looks, my acquaintances for their good character, but my enemies for their intellect. We are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. I'm so glad to hear that one. Patrick Walsh, you're welcome. Good nice to, to have you with us. Please, please sit you down. Thank you. That, that, that phrase actually, um, which is Oscar Wilde's, of course, welcome back, uh, before we do anything else, um, is very famous, um, not just because of Wilde, but, but for sure. another reason, isn't it? It is indeed. There's an interesting story to that, Marty. Many, many years ago, there was a very, very clever man, and he was sentenced to die, and he said, not alone will I not die to his cellmates, he said, but I will come back and become president of this country one day. And of course, they thought he was a raving lunatic. Now, the man's name was Nelson Mandela, and he always said what inspired him was the Oscar Wilde quotation, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. It's amazing, isn't it? It is quite an amazing uh, quotation. Mm. You have studied Oscar Wilde for some time. Yeah, the last couple of years. What is it? Why have you gone this way. What is it about him that intrigues you so much? I think the whole story, it's so tragic as well, and he was mm. such a fascinating character. And, uh, of course, he'd many faces, and he was poking fun at Victorian society. But let's not forget, we're here a hundred years later to the actual day. Yes, literally today. You know, and he's brought such laughter into people's lives. Yes. You know, and he was saying, look, we've all got secrets here, but he exposed them in such a humorsome way. But he also inspired great love and great kindness as well, you know. He, uh, he died alone, didn't he? In, yeah. In France. In Paris, in yeah. In Paris, yeah. That's right, it was very sad. And, and, and when, you, when, you, when we think back in his life, and many people have portrayed him, Stephen Fry, of course, portrayed him sure, uh, exactly. most recently. Um, I think Charles Lawton did as well, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, but it's been portrayed by many people over the years. Um, do you think anyone has really got him spot on? Well, Stephen Fry, I thought, looked very like him, and it was his dream in life to play Oscar Wilde. Mm -hmm. Liam Neeson also always wanted to play Oscar Wilde. Um, but sure, you know, at some stage we, we've all acted him out or whatever in our right. own little way. Yeah. Now you've lectured on him. Yeah. And do you have fav favourite quotes from your book? Because your, your book which we have here, and we'll have our first five callers to, to mention it, you pick out, it, you call it the world's favourite 100 quotes. Yeah. How did you determine which ones you would use in this for a start? Well, what I did, Marty, was um, I edited down from approximately a thousand quotations. Yeah. And what I would do is I would give out sheets of maybe 20 quotes, and people would pick the favourites that they liked. Yeah. So I'd highlight them and juggle them around or whatever, and come up with the world's favourite 100. And being the world's favourite 100, because there was different nationalities who participated in it. He's brilliant, isn't he? Yeah. Always forgive your enemies. Nothing annoys, annoys them so, them so much. much yeah. a great one. Or I never put off till tomorrow but what I, I can, can possibly do the day after. <laughs> <laughs> My father used to say that in, in, in a strange sort of way. It wasn't quite right, but it was good enough. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. That's right. I know a few of them. That was from an ideal husband, which was about um, uh, a politician selling a trade secret. And, of course, politicians, which is probably quite appropriate today. Politicians, there's not a single person in the House of Commons worth painting, though perhaps a few could do it a little whitewashing. Isn't he clever? <laughs> Such a clever man. Alcohol, often drunk in sufficient quantities, can sometimes bring on the signs Mines. of drunkenness. Of drunkenness, yeah. I mean, the signs. <laughs> it's one to keep close to your yeah. heart. Listen, something very interesting happened to you this week. Oh, yeah, before we even get into that, can I just say this poster? This is uh, your work too, isn't it? That's right, yeah. yeah. That was, there's 17 quotes thrown around and photographs, and there's one there of 
of the statue and I've used the quote. In Marion Square. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah, it's fabulous. It really is. And he's lying like that, so that's why I used I'm hard at work being idle. Being I yeah. That's a lovely poster. And are they for sale as well? Or, or yeah, they're available in book bargains in Abbey Street opposite Easton's. Okay. Now, to go back to what I was bringing up there, something happened to you. You were uh, at an event this week, weren't you? Yeah, I was quite shocked, yeah, last night. Involving Guinness. Yeah, it was the Guinness Living Dublin Awards and a very kindly... Um, I won this award through the project, the Oscar Wilde Centenary Project. I have it here. Highly commended entry. Mm. Highly commended. Hey, Jibbers. 2000 Guinness Living Dublin Awards. That's a lovely thing to have. And I was How, very nice. You, you say you were surprised. Uh, uh, do you want to explain as a fellow said you're surprised at this? Yeah, I was genuinely shocked because I'd been chatting to some people there last night and, you know, I knew I was shortlisted all right, but I certainly didn't expect to get that far. But it was very kind of the judges. Obviously, they, they think, Oscar, here he is 100 years later, and he's still winning yes. awards. Thanks, Oscar, <laughs> Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. But it's in recognition of your work uh, in, in, in promoting him and promoting mm -hmm. his, his, uh, his work over the years. It's a lovely thing to have. It really is quite Thanks special. Thanks very much. And is, is, it, is it now a case where, as if, you know, because you, you've got to be careful too, because you don't want to be pigeonholed necessarily. Sure. But people are going to, to assume that think Patrick Walsh, they'll think Oscar Wilde, they'll think that mm. you're the authority, and you no doubt are an authority on it. Well, certainly you still keep learning from him, you know, there's so much you can still find out about him, he's such an amazing man, but even like when he died in Paris, there was a lock of his sister's hair left in an envelope and his pawn ticket, and he had left a poem on her grave, she died when she was eight or nine, I'll give you a few verses. Mister? Thread lightly, she is near, under the snow, speak gently she can hear the daisies grow all her bright golden hair tarnished with rust she that was young and fair fallen to dust wow, so moving great. isn't it isn't he isn't yeah. it when you when you think about the memory i mean we we all applaud his genius we live in different times of course we do but when you think about the man and the sort of life that he led uh, it could have been so much easier for him couldn't it sure yeah his wife was so good to him she was very very loyal and um, oh, he just met Lord Alfred Douglas, the poisonous Bosey, as a lot of people called him, and he was completely led astray. A lot of people thought it was wild because he was the older man, but in fact it was the other way around. And nearly penniless in Paris, dependent on friends, the charity of friends or whatever, left sitting in cafes with empty cups of coffee because he couldn't pay for his coffee, just it's watching people end. come. Yeah, it really was. So yeah. tragic. Yeah, so it doesn't tragic. make any sense at all. Listen, we have our five winners uh, who are going to enjoy your, uh, your world's favourite hunter quotes. Right. This, I should make the point, by the way, uh, everybody, this book was published last year. It's now in its third printing? Third print one, yeah, thank God. It's been going very well. That yeah. is something, yeah. isn't it? That really is something. But it's a wonderful thing to have. And uh, is it the Trinity Bookstore? Trinity College Trinity in the College library. Bookstore. And Eason's and also um, it's available, well, in most Good but it's the really. biggest selling book in the Trinity Bookstore. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How and much is it, by the way? Museum as well. How much is it? Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Uh, Mary McVeigh is a winner from Carberry in Kildare. Mary Kelly from Kilrush in County Clare, and McLean from Linkfield in Surrey. You're most welcome. Nice to have you with us on Tara. Susan McCann from South Circular Road in Dublin, and Mary Whelan uh, from Nace in County Kildare. Well done to all five of you today. Congratulations. Uh, and each of you receiving a signed copy of Patrick's book, Oscar Wilde, the world's favourite hundred quotes. So thank you very much. Well done, my friend. And Thanks congratulations lot, on your Guinness Living Dublin Award, by much. the way. Just to say to you before we head off, apologies if we're a little hazy today. There are high winds around the country, and it's causing, I think, some problems on our three rock transmitter. But just to say that to you, apologies. It's not your TV, it's the elements. <laughs> now, you're welcome back. You're watching Ireland AM. Now, on November the 30th marks the centenary of the death of Oscar Wilde, arguably one of the most brilliant playwrights that literature has ever known. To commemorate the event, a new book has been brought out entitled Oscar Wilde, The World's Favourite Hundred Quotes, and it contains exactly just that. Here in studio, we are joined by its author, Patrick Walsh. Good morning, Patrick. Hi, good morning. So, you've brought together a hundred of the world's most favorite quotes out of how many? Approximately a thousand were edited down and uh, with photographs as well and landmarks to match a lot of the quotes. Is he the most quoted author? 
Probably is, yeah. Like in New York in 1882, when he was going through customs, he um, was asked, of course, have you anything to declare? And he replied, nothing except my genius. And that was with a fur coat on, you know, and the fur collar, you know, so you could imagine that. Mm. He just put <clears throat> on the spot and just came up with these, like... Yeah, I was brilliant. It was spontaneity all the time, like breakfast show. It's, uh, what, only dull people are brilliant at breakfast, you know, all the time. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> really well, but we're definitely not dull then, so it's very rarely really brilliant at breakfast. <laughs> um, what, what is our endless fascination with him? Is it, is it just because he, his, his writing was so good and so sharp, so ahead of its time and still, and still relevant? Mm -hmm. He was poking fun at society, Victorian society, but he was also poking fun at himself. And a lot of people get a fascination because it was a very sad story as well and very tragic and very hypocritical what happened to him then the whole thing and when he left prison he never saw his children again more or less like a beggar in I the mean street. for somebody who mm. was so brilliant and and was so fated mm. and so loved and and had such a, a triumphant career on one level to 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 burn out so dismal that mm. must have been awful for him he must have hated mm. the way mm. he ended he did but he still had his humor and his wit because he said he finished up wedded to poverty but in his case, the marriage was not a success, as he hated the bride that had been given to him <laughs> and left in rags, you know. Um, he, he is so considered such a great quote master or whatever. Are, are, are there many quotes that, that are attributed to him that are not actually his? Not that I know of, because uh, there's one now, Ger George Bernard Shaw was very influenced, and he said it afterwards that he was very influenced by Oscar Wilde mm -hmm. and there's one there's a similar one in this world there are two tragedies one is not getting what one wants and the other is getting it mm -hmm. uh, of course one of the more famous ones we're all in the gutter but some of us are looking at the stars. Now, the, the reason I asked that question was is because um, you've been scanning well, through what this, is this now. well I've read it from cover to cover actually oh. <laughs> what's a cynic um, I'll do anything for a good line what is a cynic <laughs> man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing now I always thought that that was from the devil's dictionary and that it was Ambrose Bierce right but this is actually, a, it, it, is, it originates with Wilde. Yeah, it is one of Wilde's quotes. It comes from one of his plays, I think, maybe Lady Windermere's fan. All right, okay. Well, there you go. Um, so how did you come about choosing the hundred quotes? Um, meeting people, editing them down, handing a sheet out with maybe ten quotes, watched their eyes very closely, and the minute their eyes would stop, I'd kind of note that in my head, and then they might say, well, I like quote seven. And I might have noted quote three as well and play around with them and whatever. So it was just a, a general sort of election, basically, of the, yeah. the quotes that were the most popular. Where does the yeah. fascination for him come from, Patrick? Your fascination. Well, I played Jack in The Importance of Being Earnest, and, uh, which is hilarious, probably one of the greatest comic plays ever written. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't know a huge amount about Wilde before that. And then I thought this was hilarious altogether and started to read up more on him or whatever. And then decide, well, let's do something for the centenary. I, I was going to maybe bring out a CD or something. I did the book, had to keep it to 100 quotes. And uh, the updated version now, there's a lot of valuable information in it with uh, what he said about himself. And there's a little miniature fact file in it as well. Mm -hmm. And a piece that I wrote about. Is there, is there anything about Wilde that, that hasn't emerged yet that we, we, that we don't know? It's amazing. You keep discovering different things about him. Because I lecture now a lot on Wilde, but I keep it quite witty and all the time you're learning new things about him you know there's a there's a big obviously i mean wild has lived in dublin and all the rest and so there's a there's a big following uh, mm -hmm. irish following of oscar wilde there's a school in bray that you're attached to isn't there the oscar wilde school. that's right how, how many people are involved with that and how big of a following is there and is it getting more popular yes it is carmen cullen is the director out there and she just had the oscar wilde school last week and uh, it's to encourage young writers and children's writing as well. But while worldwide, like that book, 60% of the people that purchase that are Americans, mm. you know. Okay. But uh, he's very well encouraged. You, know? yeah, you brought um, um, a poster in, <coughs> which we have over there. Um, and I don't know, are, are we going to be able to get a shot of that? Uh, could you tell us about that? It'll, it'll, it'll be coming up now. This, yes, this. What's this about? That's uh, a poster of Wilde. There's about 17 of his more famous quotes. And there's a little piece that I wrote about him, maybe a couple of hundred words, maybe a hundred words. So, um, Patrick, out of all of the quotes, what's your favourite? What's favorite? my favourite? 
I'm going to do. I can resist everything except temptation. <laughs> Would be one of them, definitely. I like that. Yeah. I, I do. I like kind that. Kind of sums up human frailty, really, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Patrick Walsh, um, thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure, oh, and uh, enjoy the centenary celebrations. All I'm right. sure you'll um, you'll indulge you you'll immerse yourself in them 100. All right. Thanks for having me. Good luck. All right. Uh, we'll uh, have a look at uh, the weather now outside. With